So it's going to be a history light tour. A Coca Cola light, so we lower calories this one. Right. We're doing the medieval one now, and I'm doing the Georgian one from here, half two, if anyone's still in town. Uh, this guy here, you have to be of a certain age to know who he is. <laughs> Younger people have no idea. Uh, people from North America would, because he's a Hollywood star, from the continent of Europe. Richard Harris means nothing until you say Dumbledore. And there's the reaction. And there it mentions over there his last big budget movie was um, in Gladiator with Russell Crowe. The Spanish and Presbyterian Princeton Prayer Meeting House. Bit of a, a mouthful. But their congregation is dwindling. Uh, but it's getting a new lease life because the Franciscans gave the church to, to the city, to the parish. And now the city museum is moving into this building here in a, in a couple of weeks, in about six, eight weeks' time. So it's getting a new lease of life. Some wheels underneath. The bridge used to swing open. When the bridge was built first, it was obviously manpower would open the bridge and it used to swing that way. Uh, but it hasn't opened since the 1920s because ships have simply gotten too big. It was to let sailing ships upriver. So you'll see it as we move on, we'll be going this way. Uh, Viscount Fitzgibbon. Now he never did anything, he was only 25. Sovereign constitution, they're all the first sovereign to all their own governments. Submitted to the city loved it, and there it is. So it was the Customs House, built 1765. <coughs> Full times of age, they were avoiding taxes back in the old days. So, <laughs> nothing new, too much detail about the War of Independence because it really goes over the head and you're just confusing them. But they might have seen the movie uh, Michael Collins and the jigsaw kind of falls together. But this is the British Army Barracks. In 1922, the British So remember I said the, the River Shannon is the, is the longest river in the British Isles. It's longer than the River Thames. And we are 60 miles from the sea. Atlantic Ocean is that way. But we're tidal. It's underneath. And for two hours each day, when the water is at a certain height and a certain speed, because there's great speed in the river, it hits those rocks and goes up. And it causes the tallest uh, freestanding wave in Ireland. There's a very good timeline this is a brass relief done by two Cork artists. Uh, you can follow it if you want, but I know it, so I'll just go through it. There's a little uh, relief there of King James of England. Got a very fancy hairstyle. 1688. And James converts to Catholicism. But England is a Protestant nation, so his subjects don't like him, and he doesn't like his subjects. But it doesn't matter, he's pushing on in years, and when he dies, his daughter Mary. They start to firing in rotten carcasses full of maggots to spread disease inside the city, but we don't surrender. In Ireland, that you would name a son or a daughter after the local painter saint. A fight broke out, and this guy called Jack Monday stabbed two black and tans. We're standing here since 1210. Uh, earlier, uh, Norman castles, you, you see them in France, had square towers, but square towers, if I dropped a heavy object like a rock, it would ricochet and maybe take the legs off it if you were getting this far, if you got this far, of course, because there was a moat here as well. And you can see the murder hole up there for dropping boiling oil, firing up on arrows, they're raining down tops to work around the city. This guy, his name, or his tight is smug. But the Jewish graveyard, the Quaker graveyard, they put up hanging baskets, plaques to famous people, they put the benches into the People's Park. Part of it. So there's a book launch on Michael Hogan on Friday next in St Mary's Cathedral. So if you've time at 7.30, go along to that. He wrote short stories. He wanted to get that book published, The Lays and Legends of Tom you know? In the last cottage, they've stained the steel kitchens and they make the means of meals and they bring all the lunches to all the local old folk. We're going to have another tall building, you know where the old ESB offices used to be? A 15 storey building going there. And in the American Civil War, 180,000 Irishmen fought in the American Civil War in the 1860s. 
you know, that it was a blood sacrifice, that they hadn't the chance of uh, beating the British, but they, amazingly they lasted six, six days against what was the superpower of the day, the British Empire. The British stripes, so it was a smaller building in Castle. Vikings were using the River Shannon to go do what Vikings do, go visit their neighbours. But <laughs> <laughs> on an island, if you look at the map of Limerick, they call it King's Island because it sounds good. But great for defence because if the Irish boys tried to attack them, they have to come across water. And everything in Limerick is limestone, all the parts of limestone. He imported sandstone, and so the church would be recarved in a more Romanesque and classical style. The top to fire out, and then it was a legitimate target. But in Limerick, this, uh, the streets were so narrow that the buildings were very tall, it would ricochet and maybe take a couple of heads along the way. And in 1917, and a young man who's been trained by the Russians in St. Petersburg. He said in his diary he went to very odd spiritual seance with Rasputin, the crazy monk, called Princess Milena. But the marriage falls apart very, very quickly. And he abandons his family. But now it's a democracy. And I think it was two years ago, the Montenegrin government wrote to the table asking for his body to be brought back. You know? So they could have had a very nice retirement, but they said enough is enough, and we give it to the people of Ireland. She was a mega star, but the career was quite short. The head was bad, and the husbands were much better. So Catherine Hayes, uh, yeah, she's buried in London.